Hi, hello, good morning, and welcome to this week's Serving of Mickey Waffles, a Disney podcast where we cover everything from parks, movies, and merchandise. My name is Sinead. My name's Kate. Hi, guys. How's it going? We're back together. Back together again. Together again. I don't know if that's actually how that goes, but I'm, I'm saying that's how that goes. <laughs> I believe you. I can't actually think. It's definitely, that tune definitely goes to something. da 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 Da, da. Like, I feel like it's a is Disney. Is that not Cruella de Vil? No, like it, it does. That does sound like Cruella de Vil, but that's not what I'm going for. I feel like it's like <laughs> okay. a show thing. It's fun. We're together again. <laughs> hey. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I was gonna say hey. Took last. I took last week off, but I didn't. Sinead did. <laughs> I mean, I spoke for a whopping like two minutes. Yeah, you did that, and Sinead edited it. So I mean, like, really, it's all a big balance. <laughs> I don't know if you can really call what I did editing. I did what it I was like more to call than the, I did. <laughs> I, I, I did what I like to call the Nick style editing, where you just top and tail stuff. Great. Took you put in seconds. your little. Uh, you put in your little sound bite though. You were there. You were involved. <laughs> I felt like I was part of it. I was like, oh, it me. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed last week's episode of Christmas Rappers. Uh, hopefully, me and Sam are now gonna have our own like feed and so you don't have now you can listen to me in two places bum, bum, bum. so many more places for you to find me and Sinead now not just here isn't that wild literally I feel like this is a thing you like join the network and then you have 10,000 podcasts on the network I feel like that's just what happens yeah I don't know like it was literally it's like once you get into one podcast and you're like surrounded by other people that do podcasts you're like hey I could do a podcast on that. Or hey, that would make, make a good title for a podcast. <laughs> it's like, that's all you think about. Like, and then, because that's how it came about. Me and Sam were just like talking about Christmas shitty movies. Christmas shitty, shitty Christmas movies. And I was like, hey, Sam, we should do a podcast. <laughs> and then she vaguely mentioned it to me. And I was like, let me set it up on our podcast yeah. platform. Let me do all these things. And she was like, oh, okay, I guess we're doing this now. I was mm. like, yeah, so like me and Sam were thinking like maybe, but like, I don't know. And Sinead was like, okay, well, I've set up your thing and I've set up this. I was like, okay. <laughs> she has no chill. I, Sam I was apologize. like, so we're like, are we doing this podcast? Because Sinead's after sending me a bunch of shit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was totally like, yes. Excited. Yes, we are. So yeah. Um, What did we do? Our first episode was Noel. Our second episode is The Muppet Christmas Carol, which will be out this week. And then next week, oh, spoiler, haven't really, haven't even released this ourselves. Next oh, week we're doing, I think it's called The Christmas Inn or A Christmas Inn on Netflix. Oh. It looks positively tragic. So. <laughs> oh, I'm buzzing. Yeah. So we're going to do this one. We're going to do that one for our third episode because Noel was like, okay, mid range, The Muppet Christmas Carol, top tier. Now we definitely need to do like a proper shitty Hallmark movie because. It's a long time coming at this stage now. I'm 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 very excited. I have to say, you didn't you didn't endear me to want to watch Noel. Although I think I meant to watch it for the After Dark show, but when you started comparing it to Elf, I was like, oh no. Yeah, see, it just it it's not exactly like Elf, but it's got a lot of Elf vibes. Does just... she try and be quirky? Will it will will she irk me? Oh, oh, she's quirky the entire movie. Yeah, no. Like that is her character. She's like, wee the entire time. Yeah. That's what concerns me. But I think I meant to watch it for Yeah. The dads. So we'll see. We'll see. How's your week been, Kate? Well, how's your two weeks been, KP? Yeah, they've been fine. It's cold. It's cold. Like cold. (laughs) I I have never been as cold in my entire life as I have been this week. So return back maybe like a month and a half ago, I needed a new dressing gown. This is going to end up a very rambly story. But I was like, I need a new dressing gown. Like, I want a dressing gown. And I found this really cute one on EMP and it was a Nightmare for Christmas one. And it was just like a like a light, like jersey dressing gown. And I was like, my house is really warm. I don't need a big fluffy dressing gown. Like that is not a thing I require. So Fast forward to I just this like to week. Note, 
She was so adamant. She was like, my house is 50 million degrees. It'll be fine. To be fair, though, my house is 50 million degrees. Like, my house is a very warm house. But fast forward to last week and I was just, I just could not get warm. I was wearing like fluffy socks and like thick leggings and like jumpers and I just could get absolutely no heat into my bones. So I caved and I went and got a fluffy dressing gown and I'm very, very happy that I did. Yeah, I have one, but I think I want a new one. But I just like, I'm wearing like two pairs of socks. I wear leggings and then tracksuit bottoms on top. Like I always have like a vest and a t-shirt and a jumper on. I'm like just cold, so cold. <laughs> yeah, it's it. The temperature just kind of was like dee dee dee, and then plummeted. Yeah, like um, Ed's alarm in the morning. I don't know the, what way he has it set up, but it tells it's like it's like speaks. It's like oh, it's eight o'clock. The temperature outside is minus three. Oh, I'm like he's minus. Such an I'm like old did she, man. Did one morning I woke up and I was like, I was like, did she? I was like, I was like, sorry, did she just say minus three? Is it snowing? <laughs> Ed really is like a 65 year old man, isn't he? Like, it's just, no, it's handy because like, you know, like when you, it generally sometimes like you're not fully awake in the morning. And if you set like three alarms, like eight, eight, 10 and eight twenty, if mm-hmm. you fall back asleep, she's like, it's eight ten. <laughs> <laughs> Get up. This is alarm two of <laughs> <Yeah>. three. Get up. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of what I was like. But like, she's like, it's minus three. I'm like, fuck off. I'm not going outside. Yeah, no. But speaking of going outside, lockdown yeah. restrictions have started to lift here in Ireland. <clears throat> yeah. Mm-hmm. How are you finding it? Not great, to be honest. <laughs> I'm not enjoying it. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we went to the lighthouse on Saturday to go see the Muppet, the Muppet Christmas Carol, which I have to say the lighthouse, the lighthouse was great last time it was open after the first lockdown. Still mm-hmm. fantastic now. They've got staggered show times. Their social distance seats are absolutely amazing. Like people just know what to do. It's just, it's, it's very nice. Apart from... This woman who was sat in front of us. I say in front. So like the, the row in front of you and behind you is empty. So this one was technically two rows in front of us. Okay. And so her friend was already sat down. And first of all, so in screen one, there's the door that you usually go into. But now for a one-way system, they want you to use the other door around the other side. So there's a big sign in front of the door that says, please use screen entrance this way, not this door. Because they're running one-way system. Mm-hmm. And obviously no one can read because being inside for six months obviously just reduces people's capacity for literature so mm-hmm. people are just ignore that go straight in the regular door so first of all this mad bitch came in the wrong door automatically we were like you're a f- you're i hate you then yeah. she went and sat next to her person she went to the person who'd already been sat down and was like no come on and she went and sat in the middle row her seat was not in the middle it was over on the left and then right. me and ed were like she's not sat in her correct seat which sounds pedantic but you literally have designated seats for social distancing because you have to Mm -hmm. have two seats to either side of you and a row in front and a row behind you. This isn't like a, oh, that bitch didn't sit in her seat, Jesus Christ. It's like literally for the safety of everybody in the building. She moved to the middle. That was that. And I was like, okay, look, she's going to get away with it because the movie, the trailers had started and no one did come in to claim their seat. And this woman with two kids came up and was like, she looked very confused. And she was like, sorry, is that row K? And she was like, yeah, it is. And she was like, oh, are those your seats? And the first woman who'd already sat down was like, oh, no, our seats are down there. And I swear to God, the other woman was like, why is it a problem? And I would have trolled her. That mum was definitely like, oh, well, there actually are seats. And I think the other one was like, oh, it's fine. We'll move. And the mom was like, no, no, it's fine. We'll just find other seats. So this mum and her two children and it ended up her husband was there as well. They then had to move to somewhere else. And I was like, Jesus Christ, if someone else comes in and is like, sorry, you're sitting in our seats, I'm going to fucking hit this woman. But like, <laughs> so like the trailers were go- the trailers were on, but like, do you know the way you can still kind of talk during the trailers? Cause like, it's yeah. not like, they're like, they're bad. Tra- like none of these trailers are for actual movies. They're just like, COVID, yeah. COVID, COVID. And Ed was like, 
isn't it mad how like the one thing they ask you like isn't it great that like the one thing the only thing they ask you to do is like make sure you sit in your assigned seat and just you know <laughs> like isn't it great that everyone just sits in their assigned seat for social distancing like isn't that just great <laughs> love it oh it was just so annoying and i was like i might hit her on the way out but like um she by the time we'd left she still hadn't gotten up from her seat so i was like i shan't say anything to her so what a wagon but i swear if they'd have been like the seat the row like in front rather than two rows in front i definitely would have been like sorry you're supposed to sit in your assigned seat for the safety of everybody it's actually extremely dangerous that you've moved seats yeah because that's the thing because like she would have like touched the armrest and all that kind of stuff yeah. So even if that ma'am had have asked them to move, like technically her seat has been like contaminated by something. Contaminated, else. I guess, if you want to use that word. But yeah, yeah, I understand. People freak out that we use the word contaminated. <laughs> but you you know what I mean. It's no, I know. Oh no, I, I understand. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. But other than that, the lighthouse was lovely. Excellent. But then the we went into town and I'm surprised we didn't have an anxiety attack. <laughs> because yeah holy jesus christ if it wasn't for the fact that i'd already ordered a pair of shoes to the shop i think we would have just turned around and gone home yeah town town was scary so i unintentionally ended up with a very busy weekend so my friend alva's birthday was on friday went and met her we had a like braise around some of the shops friday was actually fine nowhere felt massively busy like it actually felt completely fine and then Saturday, I had like 10 bajillion things that I had to give Sandy, the lovely Sandy that paints the jackets that we've had on the podcast 10 million times. Um, I had a bunch of stuff to give Sandy. And if anybody knows me, I hate posting things. So I was like, I would rather get on a Lewis and go into Dublin and meet you and hand you these things than post them to you because I fucking hate posting things. So I did that. And that was fine. And I had to like exchange a couple things that I bought on Friday. And Upper and Grafton Street was fine. And then I went and I exchanged a shirt that I'd got in Topshop and I walked out onto Henry Street in Dublin. And it was like I walked into a wall of people. It was so fucking scary. I was like, I hate this. Like, get everybody away from me. I hate this. It was truly awful. Like, everyone was just walking into each other. So we've gone to Dublin City Comics first, which is down Parnell, which is up by Parnell Street, which is quite quiet. That was fine. Mm-hmm. And I waited outside because it's kind of a small shop. I was like, I don't, I don't need to go in. Yeah. Wait outside. That was fine. Then started making our way up to Henry Street and it slowly started getting busier. And by the time we turned the corner to go on to Henry Street, I was like, OK, I'm going to put my mask on now because this is awful. And literally, because in my head, I was like, cool, we'll go into town. And like, if it's not too busy, like... I might pop into pennies, just like have a look and like, you know, like I didn't have any, I like I wanted like some Christmas pajamas and some slippers and like that kind of stuff. I was like, oh, you know, that'll be nice. No, no way. Pennies had their queue wrapped around the side of the Mary Street store. There was queues outside literally, literally every single shop. The JD queue was not only long, but also not socially distanced. And I'd say maybe like a third of the queue were wearing masks in the queue outside. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. And it was like not socially distanced whatsoever. And I was like, right. So we literally dipped into Marks and Spencer's, which was half decimated. I grabbed like the first pair of pajamas that I was like, they're nice. They'll do. Um, Paid. That was fine. Then queued outside office. Ed, we divided and conquered. Ed ran to Dunn's to get something. And then we were both done at the same time. And then we were literally like, right, let's go. Fuck this. And then we literally, when I say ran out of Henry Street, I don't think I've ever walked as fast. And if anyone knows me, I do not walk fast. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's to do something in Disneyland. Yeah, that's probably the only time I've ever walked faster. I was like, let's get out of here. It was disgusting. Yeah, it was not. Like I felt like I needed a full shower afterwards. The thing I don't quite understand is like we so in Ireland we've specifically been told now to wear masks when you are out in even if you're in open spaces in crowded areas like we're yeah. specifically being told wear your masks at all given times and don't yeah. get me wrong I get that when you go into stores that have like really warm heating on and stuff at the minute and it can get really 
quite uncomfortable. I get it. And sometimes you just want a breather. But one, it's, as we've already spent quite a amount of time talking about, fucking freezing. Yeah. And like, the masks keep your face nice and toasty. So just yeah. like, leave them on. Stop being stupid. Like, I got the Lewis the other day and there was a guy just not wearing a mask. He had like a real chunky knit scarf vaguely covering it wasn't even covering his mouth it was barely even covering his bottom lip and i'm like what are you doing but the thing is a ticket checker got on checked his ticket never told him to put a mask on oh that's weird I was i've like, seen when what? i when i used to travel in to dundrum if you didn't have a mask on the ticket checkers would tell you so that's weird see my problem i'd say they just get so much abuse that they're like fuck that i'm not doing that anymore yeah um but yeah um just wear your mask (laughs) don't be stupid like just please like just enjoy like why can't we just enjoy the freedom that we have now because come january it's going to be gone again so just like you know just like just enjoy it enjoy it within reason so that yeah please just a bit of common decency for fuck's sake (laughs) why is it so hard what is wrong with the world? <laughs> I know, I know. Speaking of what's wrong with the world, um, I just before we started recording, I sh- I showed Kate. So the world really, like, twenty twenty really has taken a turn to the point that I, between finishing work today and recording this here podcast, decided to go out and buy a Christmas tree. Because twenty twenty has really Sh- taken that much of a toll on me. Sinead, ladies uh, and gentlemen, Sinead bought a Christmas yeah. tree for herself. It's in her room. But, um, well, not at the moment. <laughs> yeah. But what I will say, so I had this like wonderful, so most of my decorations that I have, which I think my Christmas tree last year is still on our Instagram as like a highlight, is all villains and like Haunted Mansion and Nightmare for Christmas and Halloweeny decorations. That was all that really went on my tree. And we're only putting up the one Christmas tree in the house this year. And I was like, well, certainly none of my black decorations are going on the big tree because my mom gets very pedantic about the tree. And I was like, sure, fuck it. I'll get myself a little tree and I'll make it like a Halloweeny tree. I have loads of cute little Halloweeny lights. And I wanted a small black Christmas tree. Do you think I could find mm-hmm. one? No. So Which is mad. Where... I couldn't find one anywhere. So my intended plan was to get go out and get myself a small black Christmas tree. And what I've ended up with is what I can only describe as like a disco Christmas tree. It's like, if you were like, hey, Kate would like this tree. <laughs> it flashes. I plugged it in and it just started flashing. And I was like, oh, shit. Because <laughs> I, I know some people are like down for the flashing Christmas tree lights. I am not. I like a slow flash, like a dim in, Ooh. dim out, dim in. <laughs> Dim out. I feel like that's what I think that's what our lights are at the moment. They can do flash, 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 but I yeah. feel like our ones are like. Whoop, whoop, it was just whoop. the way you said. I like a slow flash. <laughs> <laughs> but these these are not a slow flash. There is nothing subtle about this tree. So um. No, if I had to put that <laughs> if I had to put that tree to music, it would be boom, 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 boom. Imagine that, but on a, a tree. <laughs> outrageous so <laughs> currently it's downstairs trying to see if it can be stopped flashing i don't think it can um but yeah 2020 has been a time to the point that i've gone and got myself a, a christmas tree so stranger things have happened eh? yeah oh also before we start um before we start i say <laughs> 19 minutes in yeah as you as you were kate <laughs> Um, we raised 350 euro for the Dublin Rape Crisis Centre. Don't know if you guys saw my cute little highlight on Amazing. our Instagram. Um, and Sam <laughs> won the giveaway. And I have oh, proof that it wasn't rigged because I recorded it. <laughs> Lads, when I, like, Sam once asked us if the white guys were good guys or bad guys. Meaning stormtroopers. Really? Such a common question with Star Wars, yeah. apparently. <laughs> I mean, also just in life, are the white guys good? Guys guys are good, bad? are they? <laughs> it is debatable. Uh, um, yeah, so I made like the final donation because I basically saw how much we donated and then rounded it up 
so I was like the last person and they messaged me back and they were like hey thanks so much for donating blah 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 so yeah the, the guys at Dublin River Crisis Centre are extremely grateful for the 350 euro that you guys have conglomeratively donated in the past month and yeah we have Sam's address we don't need to ask for it so I suppose I'll send that this week sometime when I send the Christmas cards woohoo yeah so that's that thank you so much everybody for donating 350 euro is absolutely phenomenal yeah like, it's great wow thank you everybody that donated we really appreciate it as do Dublin Rave Crisis Centre and everybody that they help and also feel free to keep donating yeah just because there's no Baby Yoda in the mix anymore keep on throwing a bit of Bob in there <laughs> exactly and then I suppose kind of a final bit of like <laughs> housekeeping ish I guess so this week is just a chatty and we'll warn you now probably quite ranty episode so oh, boys boys get and yourself girls. a cup of tea get Woo! yourself a mulled wine get yourself a hot whiskey whatever you fancy having for a tipple it's gonna be a time but for, so next week open that selection box there we go <laughs> the plan for next week is ourselves and then the lovely gents over at Theme Park Trader and then also Disney Parks and Beyond. We're having like a Disney podcast round table. Don't Ladies really know how this gents. is going to go. <laughs> I was just about to say, if you know this is how, if you have an idea of how this is going to go, please tell me because I'm terrified. <laughs> yeah. No idea how this is going to go. It's just an idea that Ryan had a couple of weeks ago. So hopefully that'll be the episode that you guys will have next week. If not, sure, we'll throw something together. It can be me and Sam again. I don't know. Or there I can just go. I can just sit here and like read Facebook comments if you'd like. I feel like that would be quite entertaining. Oh, there we go. So For 45 more, minutes. More on that shortly. <laughs> <laughs> and then, to be perfectly and brutally honest, then we're fucking taking two weeks off. Yeah, lads. See you later. Bye. <laughs> it's been a year. It's Christmas. It's, it's been... Uh, yeah, I'm taking two weeks off. Bye-bye. Yeah. So and there will be you know no what? podcasts from us. You don't need us. <laughs> There's no. so many things to do at Christmas. <laughs> exactly. So there'll be no podcast the week of Christmas and the week of New Year. But back first week of January, we'll be back in your ear holes. So you can look forward to that. One you left and one you right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get on with the news. <laughs> A 22 minute intro. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, to get us started for the news this week, who would have thought it, but it's pin time with Kate. (laughs) Guys, there's December pins. (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) What's going on? Um, So yeah, I was like, literally, what the fuck? But World of Disney in the Disney Village is open. So like, you can just wander in and buy merch in the Disney Village, which I guess kind of makes sense because they're just like a shop, I suppose. So, yeah. yes, you can rock up and buy these pins. Uh, 5th of December, which has already been and gone, we had some The Child pins. We had just a regular The Child standing, six ninety nine. Uh, We had The Child in His Little Crib thing for seven ninety nine, And we also had The Child in this little hexagon shape, half eaten a frog that says snack time for twelve ninety nine. Oh, I imagine they are, that one's a bit bigger or like a 3D pin or something. Um, they're all open editions, so if they're still, if they're not sold out, they're still there. Then for a little bit of Christmas, there is a Mickey Mouse Santa pin, which is actually quite cute. It's just just his head. It's seven ninety nine. There's a little Chip and Dale ringing their bells for seven ninety nine. Good old Noel tick and tack. And then there's the Christmas lanyard, which oh, she's so cute. But she's ten. She's ten euro, right? It's really weird. So you've got the Christmas lanyard, which is ten euro. Then you have the animator lanyard, which is nine ninety nine, and then you have the Cinderella lanyard, which is also ten euro. Why not make the animator lanyard ten euro? <laughs> That's weird. Why would they do that? It's just the little things of Disneyland Paris where I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you people? <laughs> like it just doesn't make any sense. Very strange. Anyway, so that's I'm pretty sure we've had that animator lanyard previously. I wonder was it on a previous release that never happened. Um, Maybe. So that's the 5th of December. Then moving on to the 12th of December, it's these little... Uh, I don't actually think they're pins. They're lanyard accessories. Um, yeah. Which I 
guarantee you will break we'll within break. five seconds. Yeah. Um, so you've got the Cheshire Cat, Stitch, Simba, Marie, and Crushet, Tinkerbell. They're each four ninety nine, and like, nah, don't need them in my life. Then on the eighteenth of December, we've got the exclusive pins. So we've got two world's best friends pins, both of which make perfect sense. You've got <laughs> Lumiere and Cogsworth, and you've also got Simba and Nala. They're both fifteen ninety nine each, and they're both exclusive to seven hundred. And then you've got two carousel pins. We have Ariel in her pink dress and Belle in her yellow dress. Again, fifteen ninety nine and exclusive to seven hundred. Um, obviously unava- only available in World of Disney because it's the only thing that's open. Then on Saturday, the 19th of December, got a whopper. So we have some new lanyards with the little pockets that are portrait rather than landscape. So with the little heads on them. So we've got Winnie the Pooh, Chip. Now, Chip, is that to match the Dale that we had a couple of months ago? It must be. <laughs> it was Dale. It must have been Dale a couple of months ago, wasn't it? So yeah. Chip, then Simba and Baloo. Then there is a booster pack of four Christmas pins for twenty euro. Oh, sorry, those lanyards were twelve ninety nine. Um, then there's the booster pack of Christmas pins for twenty euro. Which, honest to God, they're so cute. If someone wants to buy these and send these to me, go for it. They're adorable. Uh, so it's Mickey Mouse, Minnie Mouse, Pluto, and then the little Figaro in a present in a little present box. It's so cute. Then there's a Marvel logo pin for six ninety nine. It's literally just the Marvel logo. Um, the Gauntlet for seven ninety nine, Thor's Hammer, Mjolnir for six ninety nine, Cap's Shield for seven ninety nine, and then you've got some like f- head pins. So you've got these are like classic animation style. So you've got Thor, Iron Man, Captain America, and Hulk all for six ninety nine each. Uh oh, Pintet, yeah, head pin, and then Marvel lanyard for ten euro as well. But they're I can't tell if they're animated. I think they are. But I've got Captain Marvel on it, which is Captain Marvel and Black Widow. Wow, progressive. Um, <laughs> so yeah, and then that's all the pins. Uh, I think it says you still need a reservation for the limited edition pins that they're sending, that they're doing in World of Disney, which I think is a bit rude considering that Shop Disney in Europe stop selling the Minnie Mouse main attraction because they didn't want to encourage people to come to the shop. And yet in World of Disney, they're like, hey, we're still doing that reservation system if you want these limited edition exclusive pins. Mm. Um, But yeah, that's it for the pins. Who knew we'd actually have pins again at the end of the year? I'm annoyed that some of them are quite cute because I I can't buy them. I, there's click and collect but I don't think I'm or ring and collect but I don't think I'd be able to pop over <laughs> I don't think not not logically anyways um, yeah, no. but so as we mentioned World of Disney is still open and DLP are very clearly trying to get any money going through so currently until December 23rd all annual pass holders if you have an annual pass of any type you can get 30% off their purchases at World of Disney. What? That's insane. There's 30%, already... That's basically cast member discount. Cast member discount is 35. But that's cast member discount in the stores. Cast members don't even get 30% off of the perks. Oh, yeah. True, 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 true. Like, true, true, true. 30% is crazy. So whether you have an Infinity Pass or whether you have... What's the first one? Magic? No. What's the first one? Discovery? Discovery. If you have an Infinity or you have a Discovery, everybody gets 30% off. So if you lived near the parks, like, that's insane. So you if you do live near the parks. Seller. Yeah, what a time to start. <laughs> so yeah, discounts for everybody. Sorry, I got caught in a yawn. Then a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about the fact that Disneyland Paris now has do the way if anyone's been to Disneyland Paris in Christmas they have this like advent opening thing that they do in front of the castle and it's just shit it's just absolutely shit shit. they open a door and they're like look at this product you can buy that you can always buy and it's just it's so stupid it's just the stupidest thing ever and it's such a big hullabaloo you literally waste half an hour there for absolutely nothing this year, obviously because you can't travel to Disneyland Paris, they have Disneyland Paris at home. And this is like an ongoing thing. But now they have a advent calendar for Disneyland Paris that's interactive on 
like on your phone so it's actually kind of cute a couple of weeks ago we were like this will be shite it's actually kind of cute <laughs> so you basically go on it and there's a bunch of doors and you have to go find the number like on a real advent calendar so they're all mixed up it's really cute so like on the first day they give you a recipe for a yule log that looks like mini mouse with a little video that's actually adorable then on day two you just click and the door opens on day two they gave you like a bunch of uh backgrounds for on for your zoom meetings so like you can be like in you you can be in the sitting room with goofy just chilling for your zoom meetings isn't that cute i actually might try and download some of those because i have my green screen so that might work um then like number three they gave you a download pdf to make some christmas decorations uh one of them was like a screensaver for your phone like they're actually fair play they're it's better than the shit that they do in the parks <laughs> yeah because like in when they do it in the parks yes there's a whole hullabaloo and yes a kid or a family gets picked out and the characters show up and it's cute and then they literally just open the door and it's like hey here's ears that if you go back all the way up there now to main street you can get ears in the emporium that you were able to buy yesterday yeah, but it's not like, uh, like I'd be like, okay, if they're like, hey, this is our like product of the day. It's 20% off. Or hey, this one's buy one, get one free. Or hey, this product's been released today. You couldn't buy this yesterday. Anything. Literally anything. <laughs> it's awful. It's very bad. But yeah, I highly suggest this having calendar. It's actually pretty cute. Um, I actually looked at it just before we recorded because we wanted to talk about it. But I'm actually going to go through it and actually see what there is to do. And I might even make that little Christmas decoration because that looks kind of cute. Yeah, like when I tell you how skeptical me and Kate were because it was before the start of December that I sent this link and the two of us were like, lol, this is going to be shit. <laughs> and like that was like the end of our opinion. We were like, it's going to be crap. Let's take on. <laughs> Don't even need to speculate about it. It's shite. <laughs> and now I'm like, ooh, you'll log. <laughs> Honestly, we're so easily impressed. But it does look very cute. So (laughs) I will include the link to it in the show notes as well. So if you want to go have a goo, go have a goo. Would recommend. It's very, very cute. Please do. Um, so new thing that happened last week. So my Disney experience have added a merchandise mobile checkout thing into the my disney experience app for walt disney world kind of similar to when you go into tesco or i think super value also do it and you can like scan your club card and then like boop things as you're going best thing in the world love it but you can now do this at mouse gear and then also the everything pop shop and dining place in pop century and basically you grab a specific shopping bag and then you scan the things as you put them into your bag and then you check out on the app so you're not having to like wait in a queue you're not having to go near a cast member or anything like this so i haven't seen a whole lot about how this is working online they are still testing it so i'd say there's probably some teething issues but i don't know how that will work because obviously if you have like an annual pass or if you have like dvc and you're entitled to discounts like i assume your my disney experience profile has that in there so does that automatically apply the discount I would imagine it's built in to the system. Yeah. Like, I but don't that's know, funny. but I would hope it is. <laughs> I mean, DLP might get this in, like, 2052. Yeah, I was like, not now. They've just about managed to somewhat update their app to make it yeah. actually usable for people. Yeah, uh, true. Then, keeping on track with the American parks, I don't know if any of you have seen, but America's still on fire. <laughs> very much on fire so california the state of california has gone back into like tier three lockdown or something they've like basically gone backwards a lot of places have had to close again uh so there was a alert thing released for disneyland resort so while the downtown disney district has begun a phased reopening beginning december 7th restaurants and dining locations that do not offer takeout will close retail locations will remain open The hotels of the Disneyland Resort remain closed and will reopen at a later date. Oh, that's the other thing as well. So they decided that they were going to open the Disneyland Resort hotels and they've now decided not to do that. They've held held off on that. 
Disneyland Park and Disney California Adventure Park remain closed and will reopen at a later date. Definitely not going to be 2020. It's just not. It's no. going to be 2021. Pending state and local government approvals. Upon reopening, certain parks, hotels, restaurants, attractions, experiences, and other offerings will be modified or unavailable, will have limited capacity, and will be subject to limited availability or even closure. And park administering and offerings are not guaranteed. We've taken an enhanced health and safety measures, and inherent risk of exposure to COVID-19 exists in any public place where people are present. Um, yes, I had a p- while I was reading that, I had a point, and now I can't remember. Oh yeah, I was reading social media, and people see what like the public were saying about this, and yeah. it's literally split down the middle of Jesus Christ. When are Disney going to sue California State? And the other half of people being like, Disney's such a baby. Disney always gets its way. And now this is the one time that it can't. And so it's throwing its toys out of the pram. And it's yeah. like, nah, 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 I can't do what I want to do. And so I'm annoyed. And literally the opinion is split straight down the middle. It's like, Disney should fight California. And fuck off, Disney. People are dying. <laughs> yeah. It, it's interesting because there's, there's a couple of vloggers that I watch that are very much... And I've watched them for probably about a year or two now. And they're very much Disneyland vloggers. And have said on numerous occasions, I never plan to go to Walt Disney World. Why would I go to Disney World when I can, like, on a daily basis, visit the best Disney theme park in the world and all this kind of stuff. And then I went onto YouTube on Sunday morning and it was like, what we plan to do when our first Walt Disney World trip. And I'm like, you're that desperate? to and i i get that we obviously can have the same perspective on it because we have never lived in like driving proximity to a disney park and likely never will live in driving proximity to a disney park so we don't know what i don't think i will (laughs) no but like we don't know what it's like to have that access to it and to go like every couple days of basically your entire life so i get that we're coming at this from a very different angle but i cannot imagine choosing to just get annoyed about the fact that the theme park can't reopen rather than being like this is to keep people alive like i just i don't understand it yeah see because like people are like oh but disney world can reopen i'm like yeah but it shouldn't be that's the point the difference is florida man yeah that's literally it and like disney world basically keeps a lot of florida going and like do do you know what it reminds me of you know that bit in Hamilton when they're like, everything is legal in New Jersey. I feel, I'm like, everything oh, yeah. is legal in Florida. <laughs> like, Florida. <laughs> any, anything goes in Florida. Like, uh, if you've seen any sort of vlog footage, there's too many people. I don't care what anybody says when they're like, oh, the, the crowds are so light. And oh, no, no, there's too many people there. That is not, no, Disney World should not be open. I don't care what anyone says. Your country Agreed. is on fire. You've had like a, so many more deaths than 9-11 and nobody seems to care. And you just are like, woo, Disney World. Like I'm annoyed at this stage. You're, it's just ridiculous. And I'm annoyed because I want to go to Disney World and I want to go to Disneyland Resort. But if you guys keep adding fuel to the fire of your own country i'll never get there (laughs) that's what i'm mad about yeah 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 so speaking of disney parks being impacted by covid oh (laughs) yeah last week hong kong disneyland had to close so the official statement said as required by the government and in line with the preventative efforts taking place across hong kong hong kong disneyland park will temporarily close beginning december 2nd we are in close contact with health authorities and the government about the situation and will announce a reopening date once they determine it is advisable they still haven't the park is also scheduled to be closed today and then in brackets december 1st so there was a significant rise in cases the park had to close so at the minute there's only shanghai Tokyo and Disney World open. So half the Disney parks around the world are currently closed. Poor Hong Kong. I know. I'd say it's so confused. Like imagine Hong Kong was a child. Like it doesn't know what it's done wrong. It's just (laughs) 
kept getting told, fuck off. <laughs> we don't want I you. Know. I know. Bless them. Um, so yeah, I mean, Hong Kong keeps trying, but it keeps getting shut down. Exactly. Um, and then one of the final pieces of news, which is really the start of where I get mad this evening. Mm-hmm. Um, so Disney CFO Christy McCarthy gets contracts extended through to 2022. That's fine. No problems. Your contract extended. You've still got a job. Well done. Plus $11 million annual incentive award. Mm-hmm. $11 million to one woman in the Disney Corporation. I would extra. just like to remind everybody. Extra. That would, yeah. They've laid off at least 40,000 cast members so far this year. Now, and those 40,000 cast members, we're not just talking about cast members like in the parks, we're talking about Imagineers, backstage cast members, custodial, all of them, design. I saw a woman on TikTok the other day who's made dresses and costumes for Disney World for four years, also got laid off. We're talking about a lot of different professions here. Goodbye, see ya, don't care about ya. This one woman who looks like she could laser you with her eyes... A, an extra 11 million dollars yeah what are they doing this is disgusting behavior like it is just so fucking tone deaf to everything that is going on right now like the amount of cast members that are now suddenly being left to rely on food banks suddenly being left with no health care during a fucking global pandemic and they're like Oh, hey, lady, do you want an extra $11 million per year? Per 11 year. Mil- extra. That's not even her wage. It's on top of her wage. Like, it was bad enough when they decided to reinstate the bobs and everybody else's fucking full pay a couple months ago. And then literally two months later, not even two months later, laid off 28,000 cast members. But now it's like... Oh, congrats, lady. Here's your job for ho- another however many years and $11 million extra per every one of those fucking years. Are they taking the piss? It's absolutely ridiculous. Like, like, yeah. Disney, Disney bring a lot of joy to the world. I get it. We wouldn't have a podcast if that wasn't the case, right? Yeah. But they are making it so incredibly difficult this year. So incredibly difficult this year to want to support them in any way, shape or form. I just I just don't understand. They were like, you know, it's a difficult time. We're losing a lot of money. We've got to make rollbacks. Bye bye. See you later. All these people that have worked for the company for over 20 years. Good luck. Hope you don't starve and starve to death and catch COVID and die. Oh, hello, Christine McCarthy. Oh, you would like to keep your job for another two years? Absolutely. You know what? Here, have an extra 11 million while you're at it. It's not like we're using it for anything. We've just laid off 40,000 cast members. It's not like we need it. Like, like it just... So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, the story doesn't get any better from here. <laughs> well, there, there's. I'll, I'll describe a thing. That that should have been a joyous thing, and then I'll and then I'll just hand over to Kate for a little while. So <laughs> earlier in the year, Disneyland Paris announced that they were going to release a like retro Euro Disney nineteen ninety two collection that had a jumper, t shirt, keychain, a pin, and a mug. Right? They're all very brightly colored. They're all very not me. But so it got it was supposed to get released. Funnily enough, in April when DLP opened. Um, and then obviously with everything that has gone on what all they decided to do was to just take all that merchandise and then just whack it onto selected domains of Shop Disney I'll pass over to Kate in a minute so today was the day they were releasing them on Tuesday the 8th of December at 8am so the jumper was thirty nine ninety, t t-shirt twenty two ninety. I will say according to DLP report the sizing went from extra small to triple xl we love some size it diversity did. it did snaps for that although a dlp triple xl i don't know if i trust that yeah i got a double xl because i'm like mm. 
DLP sizing DLP sizing is not great. <laughs> I was like, let's really size up. <laughs> yeah, DLP. I I have a double XL hoodie from many many years ago that. I also have a double XL spirit jersey that I can wear. You know those big giant Udi things? It's yeah. like that on me. It's mammoth. This hoodie that I have is slightly oversized. <laughs> just like, <laughs> just about. <laughs> like slightly oversized. Um, The mug, $10.99. Keychain, $5.99. And then the pin, 7 And it was getting released 8 a.m. this morning. And I'll hand over to Kate. Yeah, right. So, if I if I hadn't been for the fact that I was like scrolling on Facebook last night because I'd exhausted all my other social media methods, because you know Facebook's the last place you go now. Um, I saw an admin post from one of the Disney pages that I'm on that's like, oh, being released on Shop Disney UK and Shop Disney Def- dot F or only. And I was like, oh yeah, cool, no problems. Like I can buy from Shop Disney UK if it's still there when I wake up. I'll pick like I'll pick some bits up because I do actually really like the collection. I thought it was very cute. That was fine. Woke up this morning and it was like half eight, and I was like, oh yeah, that collection got released. Sure, I'll pop on and see if it's still there because it's one of those releases where like you know if it's there, it's there. If it's not, it's not. No biggie. Hopped on. It was like hi. It looks like you're trying to access this website from the EU. Please click on the relevant country. And I was like, oh, this is new. I had heard previously that Irish uh, IP addresses were being sent to shopdisney.eu. But I re- didn't really think anything of it. I was like, oh yeah, Ireland. Yeah, like I'm sure it's like still the same. But I went on. Now I have to say... On none of the websites had they put the Euro Disney merch on the homepage. You had to go into new and then find it that way. So, like, first of all, nobody thought it was released even on the UK website. Just want to put that out there. So it's fine. Clicked into Ireland. Brought me to the .eu website. And it wasn't there. Clicked into new. Nothing there. No stock at all. I was like, okay, no problem. Must be a domain thing. I'll go back to .co.uk. Cleared in cash. Cleared in cookies. Grand. Cool, yeah, I'm in the UK, I'll go to the UK. Grand, put the stuff in my basket that I wanted. FYI, didn't buy the jumper because I've bought about 20 jumpers this year and I still have one on the way. So I was like, let's buy the t-shirt because I was like, remember, it's not always going to be cold. And to be honest, the next time I go to the next... (laughs) It's not always going to be cold. (laughs) And see, because I'm like, jumper, jumper, jumper because I'm so cold. But like, summer is still a thing. And like, the next time we go to DLP, it's probably going to be warm enough that I can wear a t-shirt and that's when I'm gonna wear this so like I bought the t-shirt and I wanted a keychain because I haven't I still have the keychain from when we moved in which is like the estate agent's keychain (laughs) so I was like no what I actually need a keychain and I got the pin as well because obviously the pin is cute grand had all these things in my baskets not a bodge then it was like hey you can ship to the United Kingdom United States New Zealand or Australia I was like, sorry. And I was like, oh, fuck. This whole EU thing. I can't ship to Ireland anymore from .co.uk. I was like, grand, no worries. Stick in my address, pal. No hassle. I'll deal with it. Put in my address, pal. Shall we explain what address, pal, is? Oh, yeah. So address, pal, is like this uh, thing in Ireland that's linked to the Irish postal system where they give you an address either in the UK or in the US to put in. And so it gets delivered there then on post take it and then on post deliver it to your house and they charge you a fee for using the system. It's also like, um, what's that other one called? Parcel Motel. Parcel Motel. Yeah, it's like that too. There you go. So I was like, no budge. Put my address pal in. I've been using my address pal like there's no tomorrow lately. And shoved that in. Grand. Use my Revolut. It was like, grand. Yeah, Revolut exists in so many countries. That'll be fine. There's been a problem with your payment. I was like, excuse me, bitch. So... Ladies and gentlemen, you can no longer buy anything from Shop Disney UK if you're not a resident of the UK or the United States, Australia, New Zealand, and possibly Canada. Canada, I can't remember. Like, you can't, you just can't do it. It does not accept your form of payment. Yeah, you have to have a card issued from within the UK to the point that the billing address is also linked to the UK. Like, what the fuck? But the problem was that this Euro Disney collection 
Now, we all know that Euro Disney is Disneyland Paris. Like, they're the same thing. It was just the older name. But this Euro Disney collection could be purchased by what? UK, US, Canada, New Zealand, Australia. By five non-EU countries and France and Belgium. Because the .f4 website, you can deliver to France or Belgium. So this Euro Disney collection, five non-EU countries and two EU countries could purchase this collection. They did not release it on the .eu domain. Like, I'm sorry, what the fuck? And this has actually fucked over a lot of countries. I didn't realise that so many countries bought stuff from .co.uk, but loads of people have. And it's just sort of happened overnight. They didn't issue a statement. Like, we know why it's happened. It's because of Brexit and taxes and shipping fees and all that sort of stuff. Fine. You fucked yourself over as a country. That's your problem. No worries. But, like, if you're going to start moving people, you got to issue statements. Like Revolut. I don't know if anyone has Revolut. But recently, Revolut have had to move all their Irish people to Luxembourg, I think it is. Because yep. they don't have a thing set up in Ireland yet. It's about yep. to be set up. Central Bank of Ireland just got to do their stuff. But they're like, hey, Brexit. We've moved you to Luxembourg. As soon as Ireland's set up, we'll pop you back to Ireland. No hassle. Don't worry about it. Like... That's the kind of stuff that I expect Disney to release as statements instead of just being like, yo, go to this website where you can buy half the amount of things that you can buy on the Dakota UK website. Yeah. It's just... What an absolute outrage. It just doesn't... Like, for example, Black Friday weekend, which was only two weeks ago, I ordered presents for my nieces for Christmas and they arrived a week later... There was not a bother. And again, like, I get the whole Brexit thing. A thousand percent get that. But, like, I have a Disney account and all of my orders go through my Disney account. So they will have orders, very few orders from this year, showing that I am a resident of Ireland. I get stuff shipped to Ireland and I shop on Shop Disney UK. It would have taken five seconds to send an email. Well, maybe not five seconds. But, like, they very easily could have sent out an email saying... Hey, just so you know, this is what's happening. But also, and I think the interesting thing is, so you try to order that stuff basically first thing this morning, right? Yeah, like half eight, like pretty quickly. Yeah. Now, normally when it comes to Shop Disney, we're giving out about the fact we'll rewind to the Hocus Pocus Spirit jerseys. Two minutes they were gone. Two minutes they were gone, right? Mm -hmm. Stock was still there by midday. I actually think there's still stock now. I think there's... Let's have it... Right, okay? So look, Right, you go have a look, right? Yeah, but, 29. So, all of this was going on. I was chatting to the After Dark guys about it. They were all getting their bits and bobs from it. And I was chatting to the lovely Dougie that we had on a few weeks ago to chat about DVC. And he was like, oh shit, that's really terrible. Do you guys want me to get stuff and send it to you? And it ended up being that that's what's happened. So Kate has been able to get the pin the keychain and the t-shirt shock horror i decided to piggyback in on getting a pin but anyways um but even then when dougie tried to order it and get it sent to kate's address pal it still wouldn't let him get it sent to kate's address pal he had to get it sent to his house which that even in itself i find bananas because it is a uk address but Okay, so I'm it, on the shop. Oh, sorry, are you done? Sorry, are you not done? No, go ahead. Sorry, I wasn't sure if you were. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were done. That. Um, so on the Shop Disney UK website, since I bought things earlier on from with Dougie, um, things some things some sizes are gone. To be fair, hold on, let me just go back now. I thought the pin was sold out because I couldn't add it to my bag, but it's because I already had two in my bag. Um, <laughs> so the jumper is sold out of medium, large, and extra large. So we still have extra small, small, double XL, triple XL. But again, DLP sizes. DLP sizes. Like if you're a large, a double XL is probably fine. <laughs> like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? If you're extra small, you want to be ten, like age ten. Um, yeah. Then the T-shirt is only sold out in one size, small. You can have an extra small, medium, large, extra large, double XL, or triple XL. That is crazy and do you know what they thought this was going to sell out because it's limited to two yeah 
And they only do that when they actually give a fuck about limiting it. Limited it to two for every single item. All the ones they don't care about, it's limit of 20. So just want to put that out there. And there's still the mug, the keychain, and the pin. The pin! People love pins! So if anything, it goes to show the fact that only France, Belgium, the UK, the US, Australia... New Zealand. Did you say Canada as well? I think Canada. I just can't remember. But anyways, those countries that Kate lives over The fact that they were the only countries that could order this stuff. Like, the fact that there is still product there baffles me. On .fr website, the only thing that's left is the keychain. Everything else is gone. It's not even there. That's crazy. Also, can I just mention, this soul merch looks shit. Anyway... <laughs> Just want to put that out there <laughs> but um yeah so i don't know what they're planning on doing because is it a case that they're only going to release stuff on certain domains now going forward or what yeah and also i re- like i just want a conversation with someone in disney so last week when that Rapunzel doll came out, that limited edition Rapunzel doll that I talked about a little while ago, I didn't want it because I have a Rapunzel doll. That's fine. People, she sold out in like 30 seconds. And by 30 seconds, I mean people were on the website at 8am, refreshed the page at 8am, and she was sold out already. And people are like, it is humanly impossible to buy something that quickly. Like, it's just, you can't do it. So, me being me, I... So you can email them or you can message them on Facebook. But from from experience, we've had pretty good feedback from the Facebook Messenger. And I know yeah. everyone's extremely busy right now. But I messaged them on Facebook anyway. And I was like, look, when they answer, they answer. And I believe I gave a pretty, like, nice going kind of professional-esque question. I was basically like, hi, I'm just wondering if Shop Disney are ever going to do anything about Boss. Okay. Said, hi, I'm wondering if Shop Disney is ever planning on taking action against eBay resellers. There are so many companies who seek out bots and resellers for limited releases. Disney being the multinational billion dollar company, I honestly expect to care even a little bit about the guests. I know in truth, they only care about profit. It has been this way for many years, but no company should have this many complaints about trying to purchase a doll because this was on the day. Yeah. If you can, if you cannot assist me with an answer, I would appreciate if there was someone else you could direct me to, as I really do believe there should be some form of action. So I sent that on the 1st of December, right? They got back mm-hmm. to me on Monday, just gone, so the 7th of December, and said, hi, Kate, how can we help? And I said, hi, can you please read Good. above? I have already been clearing what I need help with. And then copied and pasted what I'd said again. And it is now 10 to 9 on the 8th, and they haven't replied to that. Good. I'm like, Jesus Christ, on a bicycle. I would, like, it's not that difficult for them to implement one of those little I'm not a robot checkboxes. Like, it just, like, people can still circumnavigate those with bots. It just makes their lives a lot more difficult. And I wouldn't mind as well. That day that that doll came out, there was people screenshotting the eBay confirmation orders where the goddamn idiots have left their names and the first line of their addresses on the screenshots that they posted on eBay. And these people were like, look, there's their name in the first line of their address. You can find that order, cancel it. Or like the order numbers, they left the order numbers up. And so people were screenshotting these and posting them on the Shop Disney post. And were like, hey, cancel order number 12345 because they're reselling it for triple the price. Shop Disney didn't do anything. There was no replies, no nothing. Like, I get that at the end of the day. They don't care, I know. Disney don't care. (laughs) So long as shit's selling out and so long as money is rolling in for stuff, they don't give a flying shite. I get it. But, like, there has to come a point where, like, I am not a person, like, I don't collect anything Disney. Like, I don't hardcore collect anything Disney. There is nothing that gets released that I'm like. like, Collections of things, but not like. Yeah. Collection but I don't collect every single like the people that collect the keys, the people that collect those fucking plush that come with a backpack and a, a pin or whatever the fuck those collections are. I don't collect any of those. One because I don't care, but two because all it is, and I know that from you collecting them, it's just fucking stress. And I'm yeah. like, 
I don't need, well, one, I don't need that much plush in my life. I have nowhere to put keys. And, like, I just could not be arsed. But, like, there has to come a point where Disney have to start paying attention to all of this guest feedback. Like, there has to come a tipping point where the eBay sellers are just charging far too much and people are like, why am I doing this? And it is, like, it isn't until people stop buying stuff from eBay resellers that anything will ever change. Because at the end of the day, if they still have a market for what they're selling, they're still going to do it. Whereas if people stop buying from them, then they have, like, why would they bother? So yeah. it just, oh, it just, it does my head in. But now and I'm not big, a person, again, I'm not a person that collects anything and it is annoying me to this degree. Right? Yeah. And I also would like to mention, so now recently sorry let me start my sentence recently <laughs> shop disney put up that they're going to be putting a bunch of new ears on the shop disney uk website and it's a lot of the ears mm. that are on shop disney us and a lot of park ears that's like oh my god they're taking the hinge they're taking their park merchandise and putting it online because no one can go to the parks i was like excellent amazing will i buy a pair of ears maybe but now the big question is are they only going on to Shop Disney UK or are they putting it on the EU domain? Because yeah. if now they're only putting new releases on .co.uk, why the fuck would you have a .eu domain? Like, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. And then the other glaring issue is the exchange rate. Yes. Because... Which we, I know it, is already is a problem in like the irish stores and stuff but anyway yeah because like me and kate have been well aware of this since we were both cast members because everything comes in with both the euro and the sterling prices on it and we were unexplicably told you take the sterling price off it so that people won't complain about the exchange rate because you would have a medium-sized plush that would cost 30 euro or 18 pounds yeah i'm sorry there has never been a time where the exchange rate between the euro and the pound has been that drastic there never has been and for example one of the presents that i ordered for my eldest niece emily arrived and it was 60 pounds or 75 euro so now like that's not how that works no and like we would order from shop disney uk we would pay with our revolute so we wouldn't get charged exchange rates and it was fine and you would save a significant amount of money by shopping in pounds it's the same way you do on asos as well and again, we get it, Brexit and all that stuff. 100% understand it. But again, until people start actually calling Disney out on the fact that the exchange rate between things is fucking outrageous. They're never going to... Well, I mean, they've been doing it for at least... When did I become a cast member? 2012? So it's been at least eight years. And they haven't done anything about it. So probably they're never going to. But like, that's now also another thing to contend with. So will the merchandise even go on the EU website? Who knows? How much more are you going to get charged as a result of having to use the EU website? Who the fuck knows? Everything, like, it's just, it's just getting to a point now where it's just more, like, it's just more than annoying. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's more so that they didn't even release any form of statement to explain what they were doing. That really annoyed me. No. It was just changed and just, there was no But no I wouldn't mind, like, the new, also, this new Mandalorian spirit jersey is disgusting. It's uh, so gross. Why brown? Why dusty brown? Like, I know that's, like, the vibe of Mandalorian, but don't put on a spirit jersey. <laughs> the vibe. This um Disney Store Minnie Mouse sketch collection, that's new. That's on Dottie U. That's there. And this, like, these um Star Wars sixth scale collectibles, they're there. They're all in new. Like, yep. I'm just... And the new Soul merch, that's all there. I'm just so confused yep. as to what's going on. I don't understand how this is working. Like, I don't understand how this works. Yeah, I... <sighs> I don't know. 46 euro. What is that in pounds? Hold on now. That wicket figure is 330 euro <laughs> we could we could do okay. this all night hold on let me just... hold on he's 330 euro let's go see how much he is in pounds shall we yeah i'm also i also have a thing on the go for this as well oh lads remember when we used to just like compare the prices of holidays 
Oh, yeah. And now it's merchandise. Oh, see, that's not too bad. So the fa- do, do you know that Fantasio hoodie? The blue one? Yeah. So it's 46 euro or 40 pounds. Do you know that wicket that I just told you about? Yeah. He's 330 euro or he's 270 pounds. 60 quid in the difference, that is. What the fuck? Let's go on to currency exchange, shall we? See, so like, like 40 euro to 46 euro. Okay, yeah, that's probably a little bit over what it actually is. But okay, fair enough. But that... So 269.99 pounds is 297 euro. They are making an additional 30 euro just off that one product. What? Yep. Oh my God. This is a fun game. Let's do another one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I like this game. <laughs> um, okay. Hasbro, the child animatronic soft toy. He's 80 pounds. Let's see how much he is. In- oh, the spirit jersey is 50 pounds or it's 60 euro. That's a tenor difference. So... 50 pounds is 55 euros. There's an extra five. Fiver. Oh, also, have you seen this like blue Grogu t shirt? It's disgusting. Um, The child one, this new soft toy thing, but I wonder if that's because it's a Hasbro thing Hasbro and not a Shop thing. Disney thing. Is so it it's 80 pounds or it's 90 euro. So that doesn't seem too terrible but it get like there's no consistency yeah there's only like two but i think that's because it's it's a third party product see but then we go okay so this disney store cat figaro mug from seoul 15 euro 13 pounds fine that's not bad that's That's fine fine. like it's just it's so different or like the face coverings 20 pounds or 22 euro like just some of them just don't make any sense but basically don't buy that wicket um figurine from the eu website oh, find God, somebody no. that'll send it to you from from the uk yeah hold on oh the funko pop oh <gasps> the funko pop the funko jungle cruise congo queen boat pop 34.99 or 50 euro jesus christ that's outrageous what no i did look at that funko pop and was like do i want that but no no <laughs> no but basically and I feel like this has just been like a theme of 2020. We're pissed off at Shop Disney. Fucking hell. Like, oh my God. Why are they going to do these things? And to all of our lovely friends that are living in the UK, we may need you to do us a solid every once in a while. Look, and then you have the Star Wars Quantum Mechanics Woody and Buzz Lightyear Q-Fig, £39.99 or €50. Euro. I get, there's just no equivalence. Yeah, like yeah, your your exchange rate can be your exchange rate, but like if something's fifty pounds on one and sixty euro on another, that means the other thing for fifty pounds also has to be sixty euro, not seventy five. <laughs> yeah, it just makes no sense. Oh, I am just. <laughs> I'm so it's been a tired. <laughs> it's been a week to be annoyed at Disney, for various various different reasons. But um, we did warn you I was going to lads if you could see Kate she's wrapped in a blanket. <laughs> Not a visual medium but it's great. Just no, let it stop please. <laughs> and on that note considering we had not a single topic and feck all news sure we've been chatting for an hour. Do you know what? We're just good at that. So <sighs> as we mentioned linked in the show notes there will be the link to the Christmas Cracker and the gals oh, yeah. feed so you can go and subscribe to that go find them on your your fave podcast app um hopefully like us on instagram on podcast app there you go there'll be linked to the instagram as well and um, there'll also be the link to the dlp advent calendar because that's free there's a free, free you know disney thing i might actually start sharing those on the instagram because they're actually kind of cute <laughs> they're very cute the window for tomorrow is phantom manor i'm so excited Woo! i don't know what it is don't know what it's going to be but it has phantom manor and Boy, do I miss Phantom Manor. Oh, you know what would be fun if it was like Phantom Manor backgrounds? Like, I'm in a doom buggy. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, I'd love it. No, but if it's not, no, don't be sad. (laughs) Anyways. It's like paint this Phantom Manor. (laughs) On that note, we should probably wrap up and I can go find out if my Christmas tree is still a disco Christmas tree. Yes, thanks so much for listening, guys. Uh, 
please follow us on Instagram at Mickey Waffle Pod or Twitter at Mickey. You know, at Mickey Waffles Pod or Twitter at Mickey Waffle Pod. See, I didn't say it last week, so now it's gone out of my head. Uh, <laughs> just poof, information not being used gets deleted. Uh, so yes, please follow us on Instagram. Uh, yeah, so we'll have next week's episode with the dads, hopefully, and then we're gonna take two weeks off. So we'll see. We'll see you later after that one. Yeah, we probably won't get to say it on next week's episode. Oh no! Again, who knows what it's gonna be like? I have to say, if you, oh God, sorry, just before you say that, if you do end up hearing us on that, that'll be a miracle. <laughs> like if I get a chance to talk, that'll be fab. <laughs> and if not, sure we'll be back here with some form of shite. But if not. Mm-hmm. Have a very Merry Christmas and yeah. a Happy New Year. If we don't see you, lads, have a good Christmas. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye. <laughs>